I have some questions on co-creation. I had a few things happen to me about a year and a half ago, and my challenge here today is not to delve back into that energy, but maybe you could help me pick that stick up and get my vibration up a little bit. The first situation is I have a great business client of mine, and they were going on a trip, and they asked me to babysit their two dogs. And so I love dogs, and I have a great place to babysit these dogs, and so I took the dogs on. Well, because of September 11th, they were a few days late in coming back. And so the very last day, the very last hour, one of the dogs was in my backyard. It happened to get out of my fence. And this is after 10 days of staying with me and never jumping out of the fence. And it jumped out of the fence and went across the street to my neighbor's. This particular neighbor, the woman, um, was really my best friend, and so her husband was, you know, a, a good friend of mine, and he ended up coming out and seeing the dog in his property and shooting the dog dead. So, obviously, I did something to help co-create that situation, and it, and I've worked really good on it for a year and a half. I've been working very hard on getting my vibration up on it. So, I thought my life was going along great, and then all of a sudden this happens to me, and I'm a little confused on what I could have done to co-create that. When you think about something like this, there is a tendency to want to hold yourself responsible because you had been given the assignment of the care of the dogs. When what the dog would like to have believed all along is that he was the creator of his own experience. In other words, the dog felt free to do as the dog was choosing to do. The beast would say to you, if it could find words that it thought that you could understand, I am the creator of my own experience and I really like it that way. But the domesticated animals are influenced by the vibration of that which surrounds them. And so... Before we step back into the specifics of your question, we think it would be of value and maybe even some fun to think in terms of what was going on globally during that time. In other words, what was the vibrational content of mass consciousness in those days? And we think that the dog was sort of demonstrating what it was picking up globally What is the the basis of all of this is a sort of feeling of trespassing, a feeling of the injustice of trespassing, the righteous indignation that comes forth in the attitude of those who believe they are being trespassed upon. In other words, it's quite an interesting thing how this dog played out in your own backyard what was being played out on the global scale. And if the owners of this dog could say, we weren't in on any of that, then we would say, then you were not co-creating in this. But we don't think that there are many people on the planet that could claim that separation from that co-creative experience. The other thing that the dog is really wanting to assist all of you in understanding is that death is not what you are cracking it up to be. That dog in the same way that it joyously romped into the neighbor's yard, romped into what you would call the non-physical transition. In other words, the dog does not see it in any different way. If you had been able to communicate to that dog, dog, if you jump through this fence and you go over there, you're going to get shot, which will mean you'll no longer be focused here, the dog would have done it anyway. Because the dog does not fear death and does not see it as something to be avoided and is in some way wanting to help all of you to come to that same sort of conclusion. And so we know that this is not so much about the death thing for you because we can feel that you don't have any true hang-ups about the subject of death. We can feel that you're right with us on this. So for you, it is more the feeling of responsibility. And we say anybody that puts any other creative being, including a dog, in someone else's care and holds them responsible for the outcome is someone who is not understanding law of attraction. If we were your physical friends who were the owners of the dog, we might say to you, would you keep an eye on these dogs and make sure that they have plenty to eat? But we would not say we are holding you responsible for their behavior because 
we understand that the dog is responsible for the dog's behavior. And this sort of comes around to what we were talking about earlier. Humans want to control things because they want to look at manifestations and then have their feeling response to the manifestation. And we understand that it would have been more pleasant for the owner to look at their live dog than their dead dog. In other words, we understand that, that their emotional response to one would be different than their emotional response to the other. But humans are so busy letting the manifestations control the way they feel rather than the way they feel, meaning the outcome of the manifestations, you see. And so it is our promise to you that this is not the only experience in their life that is not going exactly as they want it to go. In other words, you can't buck the current of what someone else is co-creating, you see. And what about my life and my experience, I guess? is You know, I have a business client now that her dog is dead, and then my best friend, and I can't stand her husband. And and I've been laughing to myself because I think the next thought for a long time, that was, I thought, I hope he dies. And then you've explained that's relief, not a penalty. So I thought, well... <laughs> I hope, you know, he gets eaten up by maggots or bugs or something. And and now I just look at him and think, good for you. You're still here, you know. <laughs> so I've done a lot of work well, on that. What you but... might think when you look at the killer of the dog, you might think you were a co-creator in a game that is bigger than I can contemplate. You might think you were the channeler or the receiver of a stream of consciousness that is rampant on the planet. In other words, it's an interesting thing. Your news works so hard to activate fear within you. And then your police respond to your actions that have come forth from the basis of fear that has been promoted by what is being offered. In other words, it's a very interesting thing to observe. And so if we were standing in your physical shoes, we would say, I have a part in this co-creation, as does everyone else, but I am not going to take responsibility for this co-creation. And then you might ask yourself, what was your part in it? In other words, you probably worried incessantly about these beasts. And you may have even been a little annoyed that your responsibility was lengthened by what was happening. Yeah. And we are certain that your attention on what was happening on a world stage had all kinds of things activated within you, too. In other words... We're not saying that you were not a compliant co-creator in all of this, but the thing that we most want you to hear from this is that you can't get it wrong and you never get it done. And so now what is more important in all of this is what you're doing now. In other words, as you use this man who killed this dog as your object of attention to feel that rage and that discomfort, you are misusing this moment from our perspective. As you look at your client and you feel grief and remorse and responsible for what is happening, you misuse that moment. As you look at the dog and you feel regret, you misuse that moment. Multiply that by millions and you may begin to get a sense of the injustices that people all over the world are feeling about things that governments are doing. In other words, okay. imagine briefly how you would feel if your house was one of the houses that one of the bombs dropped on and everyone in your neighborhood was obliterated in the blink of an eye because someone else felt that they were justified. In other words, this is a small microcosm that awakens within you awareness of what is happening on a global scale. But here's our message to you. We are not nor is anyone assigning you responsibility to learn that lesson. In other words, you had that experience because of your vibrational alignment with that thing that is happening, and it played out in the biggest way that it could play out in your backyard. Right. While others who are finding vibrational alignment with that, that are living in other backyards, are manifesting bigger things, but it is all coming in response to the activation of the vibration within them, you see. In the same way, you could take this incident, and we're not kidding you about this, you could take this incident and hold it in your being as this uncomfortable experience, and you could relate it and talk about it and remember it and feel around it and teach it to your children and to your neighbors, and it would not take very many generations of holding this injustice activated within you 
before you'd have your own Middle East experience in your own environment. In other words, if you could go back, 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 back to what's happening over there, somewhere back there, something not much bigger than that was at the heart of it. And so you just have to decide, how long do I want to feel bad? And if we were standing in your physical shoes, we'd say, not that long. In fact, not long at all. And how much responsibility do I want to hold for everybody else's creation? Not any. And who am I responsible to? Myself and my own alignment. And how does this thought about this neighbor feel? Not that good. Then I'll look over there. How does this thought about this dead dog feel? Not that good. I'll look over here. How does this thought about this morning client feel? Not that good. I'll look over here. And while many might look at you and say, oh, well, you should be giving more attention to this and you should suffer longer, we must say to you, you should suffer not at all. Is there a pre-life agreement or are there souls that like to be together? Or Yes, there is, is much of, of much of, there is much of that. Nothing is ever random. There is much of that going on. But the pre-life agreement that all of you had as you decided to come forth and interact together was let's go forth and have joyful interaction. And the predominant thing that you said to one another, that you meant to one another, was we will be stimulators of desire within one another. And we will be facilitators of alignment with all of that. All of you have intended that, some of you more strongly than others. And you can feel the intensity of this. But we never want to make a big thing about that. There are many that want to talk about families of consciousness and soulmates and all of that. And we're happy to oblige you when you want to talk specifically. But what we really want to say to you is you are all extensions of source energy and you are all unique and powerful and wondrous beings and there is not a person on the planet that you could not have joyful interaction with if you would approach them from your God self rather than from your disconnected pinched off self. You say right, right, right. Yes. Okay. Even if they kill. Jerry and Esther have been singing a song for three days and now they know why. You can't go shooting them down even if it was your lover. In other words, people don't kill from any stance other than from their own place of insecurity ever. And no one who's connected to Source ever kills another ever. So really, ideally, I would just have forgiveness and acceptance and just say, that's how it happened. Forgiveness or ignorance. Well, I think I've been trying to ignore for a year and a half. So I th- I've been trying to ignore. What forgiveness is, forgiveness is replacing a vibration of disconnection with a vibration of connection. Forgiveness is replacing a vibration that disallows well-being from flowing to you to a vibration that allows well-being to flow to you. Yes. Well, thank you for helping me. For the first time today, I really feel like I can give, be okay with all this. So thank you, Abraham. Yes, indeed. Jerry and Esther had chickens for a while. They lived to be very old girls. And one day, the neighbor's dog got into the chicken yard and really made a mess of things. And some chickens died and some were wounded. And one, who was particularly favorite to Esther, was hurt very bad. And so they didn't know what to do. They were new in the world of chickens. And they certainly weren't ready to kill the chicken, even though they could see that it was probably not going to live. And so they called a veterinarian who lived 57 miles from them, who said, I will be happy to come. So he came, and the chicken died in his hands, and he gave Jerry and Esther a bill for about $100. And then Esther took the bill to the neighbor whose dog had killed the chickens. And he very sympathetically received the bill, gave her a check for $100, and chained the dog. And then (laughs) Esther wished that she had not taken him the bill because she did it from a sort of attitude of wanting him to be responsible. But he didn't kill the chicken. His dog did what was natural to its behavior. And so then Esther was in this sort of uh, confused state for a while about what was worse, a dog killing a chicken or a dog now being chained for the rest of its natural life so that it wouldn't kill another chicken. And Esther said, 
I don't want to be the one that has to sort all of this out ever again. In other words, I think from now on, I'm going to just let things follow their natural course. I'll let everybody sort of co-create in the way that they co-create. And I'm not going to get into the middle of this responsibility. Now, that's not the easiest thing for you to do when you have domesticated animals and laws and rules that say, since it is your dog, you are now responsible. But if we were standing in your physical shoes, we would not make ourselves responsible for the vibrational attraction of any other being beast or human.